been in all three schools. Um, the last probably 12 years here at the elementary school as both the principal and the superintendent. In this building, um, it's, it's kind of interesting. A lot of people talk about hearing voices uh, from empty rooms or down a hallway. I haven't experienced that, but um, more, more than one occasion. Um, I have had the phones come on, phones go off, uh, lights flashing on the phone system when nobody's in the building but me. A year or so ago we had a brand new camera system for the school security system and it's, it's based on motion so the cameras don't roll unless there's motion. Um, and so right after we had the new camera system put in, uh, we came back in after a long weekend and the camera, you know, we brought up the, the cameras and uh, they were all frozen. And we have, I think, 24 cameras in the building and we had two of them that we couldn't unfreeze. And the, on the one camera, uh, it was dark, completely dark, except for two bright lights, or we, we thought it looked like eyes of, of you know, flash from a, from a light on those eyes, but we couldn't unfreeze that camera, and so we weren't sure what, what the issue was, but that was kind of a creepy thing. And um, at the same time, on one of the other cameras, um, the camera came on, nobody's in the building, and we could see something go flash across the camera, um, and they they're sitting up you know, 10 or 12 feet up to the ceiling and this black shape went across, turned the cameras on and then was gone. So that was pretty creepy. When I first saw it, I thought, well, that looks like a cape going across the, the camera. So something like a cape or a, or a, a, a towel or, or something like that. But it didn't move down to the next camera, or the next one down. So it was just the one camera, went right across that, um, enough for the camera to come on and take that picture and let it roll. Mm -hmm. So it was probably on the, on the, the camera for over three or four seconds. Really which is interesting because the way the camera systems are set up, they're designed that once one camera picks up, um, you move another four or five feet and the next camera turns on. And whatever that was, uh, just was on the one camera. There are things here that, because of the experiences that I have seen and that the things that I've heard, that it's the creepy, it gives you that feeling that there's something more going on here than what is a normal, regular elementary school. Okay, so I was here and it was dark and I was getting ready to leave and this was one of the first, well the first experience I really had with this type of, I'm not even sure what you call this, but as I came down the hall I came towards the gym and this is the way I usually went out is I came into the gym right here and as I got through this doorway the door is straight ahead of me so I just started walking and as you get to the second doorway I stopped because something caught my eye and when I looked down that hall, standing in the middle, there was a figure and at the time there wasn't a light that bright. So you could see a figure standing there and it was a tall man, you could tell that he was tall. Um, he had on just a, it looked like a long black something, you couldn't really see that but the outline of it. and. It was kind of that scary feeling that you get, so I turned around and turned away, and then when I looked back, he was gone. So I went straight for the doors and went out, and that was the very first experience I had with seeing anything in the elementary. This is referred to as Devil's Island. Um, that has more to do, I believe, with, with the killing than anything else, the killings. Um, the two kids that were uh, murdered, Aaron Annette was two years older than me, and Kevin Annette was my age. Um, 
to be honest, they both they both creep me out. I know that sounds awful, but they were kind of into the occult and that kind of, of thing. Um, I don't know what happened to, to them, but you know, I've heard rumors that it could have been like their father. Um, I don't know, but it, it was it was unsettling when it happened for sure. When I was in high school, it, it was kind of a prevalent thing. Like there was always stories and different things on the news of people's like sheep or cattle being being killed, and the only thing taken out would be like entrails and, and different like organs. And it was always like you know the same organs of the of the animals, and they would be they killed. Um, I was at my one friend's house that lived kind of up on a hill above where the river is and if we were staying the night outside on the trampoline and you could hear chanting and we were looking and you could see fire and different things going on. It was just kind of a well-known thing you just did not, you don't, didn't go on that side of the river bottoms because there was some pretty yucky stuff going on down there. We've seen the circles that they make down there, like oh, really? they'll put stones in a circle and they'll put stones in a certain design and whatnot. Yeah, we've seen that. This has been closed off for a long time, so it hasn't been an issue. So it's allowed this area kind of, it's allowed it to heal. It's allowed it to uh, resort back to, you know, it, its natural setting. And that's been good. But, you know, th this, <laughs> this wound of, of having those two boys killed right here is still there. And, you know, will never go away. I don't know. For, for it's an old town. I mean, it was settled, I'm not even sure of the year, but early 1900s. And, you know, there's still a lot of old homes. There's a lot of old buildings um, that still exist because they've been, you know, well maintained and different things like that. And I don't know. I don't know if these things are attached to the place or to the people. I've often kind of wondered that. <laughs>